So the optimistic way of looking at things is that uh, all countries are together negotiating the climate change problem, mitigation, adaptation is very local, but there are many guidances given, many uh, ag you know agreements made on setting up national adaptation plans, evaluating, monitoring, communication, etc. There are efforts to provide uh, weather and climate forecasts to the Global South so they can manage their risks. There are deficiencies in those products, but still, <clears throat> you know, efforts are underway. But on the other hand, as I said, despite these 25 years of negotiations, the emissions are not really coming down yet and not clear we are really near peak emissions, even though some people argue that we are. Uh, there are you know, lots of deployments of renewables and EVs and so on, but are we moving fast enough? So in that context, why are there still so many problems in governance? So this is the pessimistic view saying, we are not doing so great, there are still just too many problems. In this book, we have discussed insights relating to the ability of communities to solve collective action problems. If we know so much about the, what leads to effective institutional arrangements, why are there still so many problems? What events, sorry, what prevents us from sustaining the commons? More than a billion people around the world do not have sanitation or access to clean water. Many species go extinct each year and human activities cause long-term disruption to biogeochemical cycles in nature. Many of us waste hours each week in traffic jams, download illegal music files and complain about the performance of elected officials. Knowing what leads to better institutional arrangements will not solve all these problems. What are the main challenges then? What are the open questions in our understanding of institutional arrangements that require further research? Of course, human behavior is always the key, key uh, underlying factor because if we complain about the performance of elected officials, then democracy, which is considered, you know, the most consistent with human dignity, let's say, in terms of governing systems, when we vote, we are often focused so much on our own self-interest or the interest of our communities uh, about paying as little tax as possible and so on and so forth. Uh, somebody gets elected, then we expect them to do something, but they are busy trying to stay in power and making their voter base happy. So we have a human system that is uh, sometimes very well designed, but then humans are des have designed it and humans run it. So then failure or underperformance is almost guaranteed never going to be perfect, right? So in the following uh, following paragraphs, we attempt to list some of the most important challenges. This list is not exhaustive, but rather represents only a starting point. So research in, then, research in governance and sustaining the commons are then uh, expected to teach us about the levers in the human system, in the action arenas and action situations, which will help us drive towards actually the triumph of the commons. One of the big challenges in our modern society is the scale of the problems we face. We are no longer living in small communities where we know exactly what everybody is doing. We may not even know our who our neighbors are. This is very common in many cities or even in suburbia. In an increasingly urbanized world, we interact with many people who are strangers to us. Even so, there is still an incredible level of cooperation in most modern economies. A moment's reflection should give, a, uh, give the reader a sense of astonishment at the fact that hundreds of millions of people can effectively coordinate their behavior every day. How do we do this? Institutions are of course a big part of the story where repeated interactions are facilitated by, facilitated by rules, norms and uh, punishments and uh, of course people expect uh, to benefit because it's not a zero-sum game. Somebody can cooperate with you, with you and benefit and you cooperate with them and you also benefit. So everybody can benefit in a non-zero-sum game, right? We are able to signal to each other our reputation and trustworthiness because of the uniforms we wear in the position of a police officer. You must wear an official uniform, f uh, for example, or you may have tattoos which has a community which tells you what you are political leanings are, let's say, or how uh, open-minded you are about certain music, or the tattoo may have a message 
uh, which you know may not necessarily be a liberal one nonetheless uh, we have also certificates that we earn to uh, signal the reputation so positions defined by boundary rules in that case about how you join a university and get a degree and the gossip that it is spreading about us uh, so you do things you know that there are consequences of what you post what you say and what you do it's not uncommon for us to give a stranger our credit card uh, back ban enormous stock of institutions and organizations to make a payment so I just bought something on Amazon then there is a system behind it which tells me I can trust the site through which I think I'm paying to Amazon and expecting to get something delivered we are accustomed to conditionally trusting strangers so if something goes wrong then our flags go up then we may become very cautious so in terms of scale of the system and the complexity the climate change problem and the earth system which we looked at before in the systems perspective and feedbacks uh, this is it, right? So we have, uh, of course, external forcings on which we have no control. And we have a lot of control on fossil fuels, but we are addicted to them. And one of the key aspects of governing the climate system is what we do with the fossil fuels and how do we uh, alter our energy intensive lifestyles uh, without causing so many emissions which lead to all sorts of other problems and even if we don't do anything there are feedbacks in the system so humanity has faced in the evolutionary time scales all kinds of climate change problems forced by natural variabilities like orbital forcing and volcanoes and so on which we call paleoclimate but we know that uh, many of our ancestors have gone extinct and even Neanderthals went extinct very recently we don't know exactly why but uh, Climate has always played a role in the way we spread out and the way we survived and the way we have adopt, adapted, uh, how we became agriculturalists and so on and so forth. So scale matters, complexity of the system matters, number of people matter, right? The larger the group, more the free riding possibilities, as we said before. We'll say it again now. Nevertheless, the larger the scale of our interaction spheres, uh, sorry, nevertheless, the larger scale of our interaction spheres increases the possibility that we may lack the appropriate information to make good decisions. Think about people accepting the terms of home loans that they could not understand. Think about large institutional investors who purchase investments for which they cannot assess the risks. The financial crisis of 2008 demonstrated just how calamitous and how much suffering such information failures may generate. So a small group of elites may be driving the system towards a cliff and we don't even know it and when we go over the cliff they may find ways to protect themselves like the banks did uh, but a lot of people may have lost their retirement savings and so on. There is also the possibility of misunderstandings about our intentions, motivations and the meaning of rules themselves. An important condition of well-functioning institutional arrangements is that the rules are commonly understood. This is not always the case, so you need often a lawyer to fight for yourself and if you're poor you cannot afford a lawyer or a rich person gets a better lawyer and hammers you into the ground even if you didn't if you are not in the wrong in that situation so the system in the institutions uh, do function better when everybody has the knowledge of the rules but there are other details such as financial uh, abilities to afford to fight the system or get justice <coughs> Being in larger groups makes it more difficult for individuals to be involved in rule crafting. So this is another thing. Somebody is making rules, could be elites, so democracy is supposed to benefit from ignorance according to Ian Cousin's work from Princeton based on fish, but I have to be careful on how I say it. But in general, uh, people who think they know everything can begin to drive the system in the way they think it should run. but people who are not sure about these uh, things they are doing may put up appropriate barriers to slow down the hijacking of the system but on the other hand your ability to participate in the rule crafting is more and more difficult when larger and larger numbers are involved in the group 
the commons you are dealing with uh, and so on. In the position of a US citizen of 18 years or older, you may vote, but you may also feel that your vote is insignificant. We discussed this before about how some countries have a rule that you must vote, otherwise you will be penalized. US doesn't have such a rule, many countries don't. You may not be able to have an impact on the outcomes at the national level, but you still can participate in local governance issues, whether this is through an elected office, community service project, or a voluntary activity for your children's school. So depending on the action arena and your uh, willingness and ability to contribute, you can still do a lot of things. But in the democratic system, you also elect a representative and then the representative does things based on their own philosophy, the lobbying and various other interest groups and their voter base demands and so on. Individual actions in the community add up. Because the impact of such activities is difficult to measure, the incentives to take them back are weak. Okay, this is one of the fundamental problems of society, the under provision of public goods. Public goods are set up, designed, investments made for certain level of uh, critical assets providing critical public services, but they can always underperform. Okay? Ensuring effectiveness and efficiency of the public goods is not always easy. Further, larger groups will make it easier to be invisible as a free rider. You can be one of the many who do not volunteer. Larger groups make it more likely that there are different opinions and more disagreements among participants. Among the participants, disagreement makes it easier not to act, even though we know we should. These I, uh, these play out in many ways. If there is a hurricane forecast, uh, a group may go out and start putting up sandbags to protect against inundation. But that's not everybody out there. It's just somebody. You know, there are details on that, extrinsic behaviors, intrinsic behaviors, extrinsic personalities, intrinsic personalities, people who stand up for causes and fight for causes like the environment and community uh, duties and obligations and some who do not. Some only go after image and uh, power. How can we estimate cooperation in large populations? How can we stimulate? cooperation in large populations. Can we apply the insights from this book to an urbanized and globalized world? New technologies may provide solutions. Many of us have a mobile phone with us, a small computer that can register uh, where we are and can be used to make photos and exchange information with friends in social networks or even uh, not friends but people who you are who's buying to some trying to buy something you're selling like on eBay uh, and so on. Can we use these devices to improve the information we have about each other in order to improve trust in relationships and monitor the actions of each other? How we may be able to use the crowd to govern the crowd is an important open question. So when we are communicating over the open network and exchanging photos, videos, messages, phone calls, etc., it's crowdsourcing of the information, but we are also managing to, you know, trying to govern the crowd itself. So, how do you use the crowd itself to govern the crowd? Another big challenge is that new problems always emerge. With every new technology, there are benefits, but there are uh, also there also come new problems. There was no cyberbullying before the internet. It's more difficult to bully someone in person than virtually, but with the internet now you can do cyberbullying. There was no illegal downloading before digital recording. To illegally obtain a music recording 40 years ago, it was necessary to walk into a crowded store and walk out with a vinyl disc uh, and, you know, you steal it or whatever. Again, before the internet, stealing was a more personal affair. You had actu you had to actually see the victim who was, you know, the uh, victim of your theft. Now it has become impersonal. New problems also emerge due to new insights from science. Improved technology allows better measurements and enables new discoveries, such as emergence of the hole in the ozone layer. Our understanding of chlorofluorocarbon 
chlorofluorocarbons enabled us to determine that they were responsible. Reducing chlorofluorocarbons was fairly easy. The problem was clear, measurable, and well understood, and there was a silver bullet kind of solution, H HFCs, HCFCs, that replaced chlorofluorocarbons, but then now they are a problem because they are very powerful greenhouse gases. The solution was technologically feasible and economical, but more importantly, ozone hole was detrimental to everybody. Nobody was going to benefit from it, but global warming, at least temporarily, can create winners and losers. So this is in stark contrast to climate change, which poses a much more difficult collective action problem. If and when we develop global governance arrangements to deal with climate change, what will be the next problem to emerge? First of all, climate change is not just a governance problem. We need solutions. We need to reduce emissions via governance uh, mitigation and via governance, but adaptation solutions are going to be more than just governance issues. Even though governance is involved in adaptation interventions at scales where people's lives are being affected by uh, adaptation, right, or uh, where they are forced to adapt uh, to th uh, change their livelihoods. We will, will human society ever have enough time to solve its existing set of social dilemmas before being presented with another new problem? Or put it another way, will humans ever learn to craft institutions and governance structures fast enough to address new challenges? You can think of COVID-19 pandemic as uh, one of the things that we faced, which rode on top of the climate change along with all the other wars we were having, food crisis, wildfires, climate change impacts we were having. And how did we do? Well, the focus on vaccines seems to have worked out well. A vaccine, many vaccines were uh, invented very quickly, shrinking the time scale at which these things tend to happen when you are not facing a pandemic or in the middle of a pandemic. Did the vaccines work? Not everybody agrees, but science would say it did what it's supposed to do in terms of uh, reducing the impact of the infection, even though you still can be infected and be infectious to others. Uh, side effects may be there, which we may learn about along the way and so on. So we handled that problem, but it had other impacts in terms of economies slowing down and then economic recovery stimulus funds, uh, cranking up emissions again, and climate action taking the back seat. So we have not only a new crisis on top of an old crisis, but those crises can be related to each other. Depending on how you deal with one, the other one can suffer and have a backsliding effect. So obviously the scale, the complications, uh, the group size, and overlapping solutions and impacts can have many complicating cascades. So we'll come back and continue the thought about whether there is any optimistic uh, way to think about it. Are there any optimistic examples to feel better about our, uh, you know, problems, continued problems with governance and collective actions, okay? <laughs>